Captain America Language! Sorry. <laughs> Forgot this is YouTube. <laughs> With that being said, objection! And welcome back everyone to our Marvel Plus live reaction series, which I realized we never named in the last episode, our bad, but we do have a name for it and it is... Legally Green. Seriously, there was way too many titles to choose from. So many of them were obvious. Honestly, I just wanted one that wasn't too long, that was directly to the point, and I mean... Legally Blonde's awesome, so, you know, that's what we're going with. Sorry for anyone out there who's hoping we choose otherwise. But anyway, uh, yeah, welcome to our first official live react of She-Hulk. Uh, like I said, we intended to do that from the beginning, but as we mentioned, we just moved, so, you know, stuff had to be pushed back and rearranged and smushed down. So yeah, things didn't go to plan, but we're getting back on track, or at least trying to anyway. And we're going to start off with today's episode, titled... The People versus Emil Blonsky. Yeah, so you already saw our review of the last two episodes. You know what's happened up to this point, and pretty much the only leading off plot point is that Jennifer Walters has met up with Emil Blonsky. She was just hired by this law firm to head their uh, superhuman division. He's her first client, and although there was a bit of a conflict of interest, as well as, you know, a moral ground in regards to it, she decided to take the case, thinking that, you know, he actually does have legit arguments, and there's a chance he might actually be found not guilty. Unfortunately, things don't go quite as planned, because that little cameo we saw from Shang-Chi happened to pop up. So now, this episode is going to delve into that whole incident, and we're hopefully going to figure out how the hell that came about exactly. Why the hell is Wong, the Sorcerer Supreme, going into underground fight clubs and stuff, and why is he teaming up with a former bad guy who used to rag on the Hulk? There are so many questions, and I really do hope they get to the bottom of it and all in this uh, particular episode. But with that being said, let's get started and see what happens when Emil Blonsky goes to trial. And play. What happened to you? Aliens. Aliens is what happened to you. <laughs> uh, you might want to take a look at the news right now. After shocking you might see this, please. Showing the abomination <laughs> participating in what appears to be an underground fight club. Seriously, what the fuck, man? Like, if Wong just wanted to make some quick, easy money, he could have went with literally anybody. Why Abomination in particular? Kind of fuck comes back full circle when you think about it, because we've got Wong and Shang-Chi, and also, uh, had Banner in the post-credits. True. You said to my face that you never turn into the Abomination anymore. No, I said I'd choose not to. Uh, you know, these were extenuating circumstances. What? Do you understand that this constitutes another crime and totally destroys your chances at parole? I was forced to leave myself, but I returned on my own free will. Who forced you to escape this insanely high security prison undetected? A sorcerer supreme of the mystic arts, and his name is... Wong. Just... <laughs> and his internet presence is a little chaotic. Like He's Beyonce. Either a <laughs> Sorcerer who lives in New York, or a librarian who lives in the like a LinkedIn profile. One that's both. It's me. Of course, I'm guilty. I sent a thirst trap. It was a picture of me with a bunch of books. Bitch. Just hope that he calls back. I know you can't wait to see. But why did she take her hands off the wheel? It's one of those cameo every week type of shows. That's not. Looks at Bruce. And Blonsky. And Blonsky. Yeah, but Banner and Blonsky make more sense to have. Granted, there's a good reason for Wong to be in this, but... ...law from GLK and H has been tapped to represent Emil Blonsky. Ever since it's been revealed that Jennifer Walters has a superhero... ...the Tattles? ...the stupid name. ...lawyer has been plagued by public backlash. ...the public backlash. ...but then they gave it to a woman? It's almost like they're uh, making comments on the fandom. <laughs> 
I'm just saying, make your own. How that job out. Well, you have right. oh, well, yeah, Gideon Wilson, the original prosecutor, who put the abomination away all those years ago. Come on, this case is huge. People want to know every single detail about your life. You're a public figure now. First thing I like is like, why do we call requests for interviews? So you should do it. People only care because I'm representing Emil Once that's over, I just want to be the serious guy now. No, that's just Wishful thinking. Just because you're your Minute I spent on this practice, one less minute I spent focusing on my job. Dennis! No, what? Not Jen Walters. Ms. Walters. Is, is that the dude she had to work with in the other one? We got too much history for me to be comfortable with her on the case. I would love to know what this is about and not work on it. Valerie Book is also in the superhuman lot of there. No, I can't talk to a 10 about embarrassing and stuff. She could. Ooh, for fuck's sake! Happy to not be involved. But why the superhuman law that the girlfriend in question is a shape shifting light elf from New <laughs> Wow, Dennis. Okay. Well, to be fair, I thought I was dating Megan the Stallion. Sorry, what? Sorry, <laughs> I thought you were dating Megan B. Stallion? A multiple Grammy Award winner, Megan Stallion. Megan B. Stallion. Wow. What part of shape shifter did you not get? <laughs> so what part of dumbass did you not get? That's why I don't want Walters. <laughs> there you <laughs> fucking are. This is your message. Uh, Mr. Wong, great entrance, perfect timing. Uh, Pug, good luck. Dennis? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I extracted him from the prison uh, against his own wishes because I required a worthy opponent as part of my training to become Sorcerer Supreme. And as Sorcerer Supreme, I insist that he not be punished for my actions. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the one who will be punishing him. The parole board will not release him after seeing this video. I'm uh, raising everyone. It's <laughs> not what I was thinking. That's highly unethical. Yeah, it's also very messy. <laughs> we'll send him to the very dimension. I don't know what that is, but no. Shadow dimension? What you can do to help is show up Shadow and realm? explain everything. Very well. We'll reserve sorcery for strategy B. Don't have your nose. Oh my god. How about I just say a number and you tell me higher or lower, okay? Uh, considering that you bought her. Inside sedan, about fifty thousand. Hundred. Oh my Two god! Hundred thousand. I am not a fool. No, it's more like one seventy-five. Hundred. One hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Must be nice to have that kind of cash to just throw around. <laughs> I'm gonna drop the case. Wait, 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 just now? Is the truth is, I think somewhere deep inside, I knew, you know? I get those things because I wanted to, but I was just embarrassed to get found out in such a public way. That's the shape she wears, so yep. You gotta take personal responsibility. I have to say, this is unexpected. Hello? You there? <laughs> there you go. Uh oh. More because I drive a cyber truck. Security! <laughs> It's my kick, baby. Miss! What's that? Be a I don't. You guys know me. Come to you live from outside the ultra high security prison where the man knows the weird design for a prison will appear before a parole board. Jennifer Walters, also known as She Hulk, rumored to have been rejected by the Avengers. <laughs> As Mr. Blonsky's counsel, I would love to address the alleged prison escape. We do have a witness who is able to clear Mr. Blonsky of any wrongdoing on his part. Then we'll start with that bit. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, about the, that. He's <laughs> prepared to give a statement after Mr. Blonsky gives his. Let's start by saying that I feel great remorse, great shame. Those yeah, you sound totally genuine so right to now. To answer your question, yes, I feel I have been rehabilitated. I've spent every day of my incarceration focused solely on redemption. I have changed. Maybe bring up those haikus you wrote. Spiritually, karmically, cosmically, interdimensionally. Etc. Mr. Blonsky does own a plot of land on which he plans to work and reside. He With his many wives. Park. No, actually, he plans to open a meditation retreat on the property. Mr. Blonsky is currently in a long-term committed relationship with 
little pen pals, um, all of whom have pledged to financially support him. Excuse me, could my kids clarify? Yeah. No. Blair, Ruth, Marta, Sheila, Alejandra, Yvonne, and Nicolette are my soulmates. We met through the prison pen pal program. They are my better eights. Oh my god. <laughs> Love you. Are they all part of a cult or something? I don't think we need to get into that any further. Any other questions? Once he started the prison literacy program, he saved me from a bad marriage. That's it, Carl. Let it flow. Now, this one is the quiet place to ship someone. Oh my god. Why? Prisoners make toilet kombucha. Ew! Ew! I really should end up. Proud of you, Carl. I love you so much. Okay, we're done with Carl. Is that all? Because there's still the matter of Mr. Blonsky's escape. What the fuck, Wong? Come on. There he is. A fucking time, asswipe. My apologies, Miss Walters. Uh, finally. I lost track of time. I I've asked Wong here today because he is the man responsible for Emil Blonsky leaving prison. You have occurred on a corner tape. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move for dismissal of all charges against my client. She has yeah. diplomatic immunity. She may have diplomatic immunity in New Asgard, but we are not in New Asgard. Excuse me, Your Honor, but Asgard is not a place. Oh my it God. is a place. Your inspirational speeches are not a <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, this case is. Besides, Asgard is a salad. My client was defrauded of $175,000 by a scam artist. My client and Mr. Bukowski were in a consensual relationship and engaged in role play. Oh, no rational adult would have believed my client's texts were from the real Megan Thee Stallion. Mm. Bukowski knew he was dating Miss Runa and went along with it until it no longer suited him. This was a relationship gone bad, not a scam. I find it hard to believe that Mr. McCowney could be fooled so easily. And the onus is on you to prove that, Mr. Pugliese. That being said, I'll allow this to go to trial. So, Miss Rhoda, your motion to dismiss is denied. So this is over. I'm canceling my Hollywood hookup subscription. It's clearly a vetting process. In light of some new information I've just received, Oh, this is old. Now, come on, Runa, it's getting a little broad. Wow, you were just making things so much worse for yourself. Loki is looking at you and cringing. I gave him no choice. I offered the asylum at the Kamataj, which is truly lovely this time of the year. But he was quite adamant he'd be returned to serve out his sentence and repay his debt to society. Emil Blonsky was forced out of his cell against his will. And even when offered instant freedom, he chose to return to his cell. These are not the actions of a criminal, but of a reformed man who truly wants to do the right thing. Well, that may be true of Emil Blonsky, but when Blonsky uncontrollably becomes abomination, isn't he a raging monster out for blood? If I could just put your minds at ease. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely Oh, not. boy. No, no, no. What? Oh boy. Uh, this could go so bad. Well, you have a war 
worn out for your rest now? Have fun with that. I'd like to see them actually obtain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't laugh yeah. like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> That's never gonna oh, happen. What are you talking about? Jen, the genie is out of the bottle, girl. You are a story now. Oh my god, you're pregnant with the abomination. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're gonna need that. Connecting to Andy's story. Thanks. <laughs> How did you two work with him for so long? Oh, I killed him in my head several times, many times. <laughs> That's really Ms. interesting. Walters, how would you describe your relationship to Mr. Bukowski? Uh, we worked together for several years at the DA's office. Did he ever share his personal life with you, specifically his dating life? Yes, he would. Uh, prolifically and unprompted. And you wanted to know, <laughs> how would you characterize Mr. Bukowski in relation to his romantic life? A fucking pig. Self-absorbed, chauvinistic, conceited. He once described himself as a New York 10 and an LA 11. What does that even mean? He nicknamed his office the Denisphere. Objection. Hmm. Relevance. Mr. Bukowski, need I remind you that you're not representing yourself here? Mm -hmm. And this is your witness. Yep. But I agree. Mr. Bugliese, get to your point. In your opinion, Miss Walters, do you think that Dennis Bukowski would believe that he could actually pull Megan? Yep. Stallion. Yes. Dennis Bukowski is an almost pathologically entitled man. He would absolutely believe that he's dating the real Megan Thee Stallion because he is truly that delusional. Yep. No further questions. <laughs> In the case of Bukowski versus Luna, I award full damages to Dennis Bukowski in the amount of $175,000. In addition, we also sentence the defendant to 60 days <laughs> for the why is she there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. The sad part is that I was just gonna get a slap on the wrist. I wish there was a way we can remove her powers and make sure she doesn't victimize anyone else. Hmm. Dennis Bukowski, just give me an idea. Huh. That will stay between us. <laughs> I love the way to prove his innocence was to prove just how fucking incompetent and imbecile he is. <laughs> Got to help him by hurting him. Exactly. It's like, yes. He is that cocky and that stupid. Oh Lord, here we go. After reviewing his record, we hereby grant Mr. Blonsky's release on parole effective. Yay! Hey, in addition to his parole, Mr. Blonsky is prohibited from turning into abomination indefinitely. And okay. in order to wear an inhibitor in perpetuity, any violation of this condition will result in his immediate return to prison. Understood. Thank you. Fair enough. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Spiritual info. Just stay out of the news. That's all I ask. I, I don't want to read any more stories about you. <laughs> you might want to reconsider that. I mean, they're going to write a story about you one way or the other. You know, best department, really. Yeah, he's right. Roll with the punches. People are going to say shit. You may as well control your own narrative. He is now a free man. Here with us in the studio, the lawyer responsible for his release, she Hulk. Yeah, my name's Jennifer Walters, not She Hulk, and uh, my client's name is Emil Blonsky, not the abomination. So tell us, how did you come up with the name She Hulk? Oh, funny story, I didn't. Um, some random guy on the news came up with it after thinking about it for like two seconds, but uh, it stuck. Uh, so now, whether I like it or not, I am forever She Hulk. Great. Mm -hmm. We have to take a break. When we come back, She Hulk shares her diet and exercise secrets. Oh so my fun. god. <laughs> Typical woman question in any interview. Fucking hate it. Oh shit. I do! Oh wait. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do this! <laughs> Powers, you better be able to back it up. 
When did I ever strut around it and show off my powers? Did you guys rob an Asgardian construction worker? Mm. Yeah. They really did that just to square up with her because. Ugh, man. So far. Four. What the fuck? You thought this was a good idea? Okay, Bubba Sides, maybe that's not go exactly as I imagined it. Thunderball, did you get it? No. Alright, we know someone's out for her then. I guess Titania, if I had to guess. Well, on the one hand, at least the uh, meal's free. That's good. I thought it was a bit much for him to kind of just impromptu change. Like, he could just said, look, I can change it well. If you allow me to demonstrate, I can show this. And then, you know. Not freak everyone out. They got the actual Megan the Stallion. Oh my god. <laughs> long way to go for a joke. Fucking long, man. You have an entire planet, an entire galaxy, universe of strong ass heroes you can fight or train with or whatever. Who would do so willingly? And you pick the one guy stuck in prison. Hey, there's my new favorite client. Oh, this scene. I've seen people complain about this scene. Oh, you are way more fun than my last lawyer. I will kill for you, Megan. You step on the back. I would die for her. I would kill for her. Not particularly in that order. My head hurts. <laughs> yeah, there's so much about all this that doesn't make sense, but honestly, I'm just along for the ride at this point. I'm expecting courtroom shenanigans, and I mean, we got That's what I want, is courtroom shenanigans, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of shit that doesn't make sense, honestly. <laughs> so I guess we'll go over this like one arc at a time. So we have obviously the whole case with a meal. So I'm like I said, I'm glad that it worked in his favor. Because the guy really doesn't deserve any of this shit. It's like, yeah, he did a bad thing back in the Hulk movie, but Bro's been like on the down low since then. And clearly, as Long said, he busted him out pretty much on his own whim. Pretty much kept the guy prisoner when you think about it. And yeah, he offered his freedom, but the guy's like, no, dude, I need to fill out my sentence if I want to get back with my seven wives. Come on. <laughs> and why the fuck was he late? I expect him to, like, drop a plot point from, like, a movie he was in or something, but yeah. The fact that he just showed up late and it's just like, oh yeah, lost track of time. Bullshit, you lost track of time. <laughs> I'm like, how long will it be before Steven gets the role of Sorcerer Supreme back because Wong fucks up? I love how Wong, in all of the Doctor Strange movies or any other property where he shows up in, he's usually the logical, sensitive mm -hmm. one, but now you have him on his own here and he just, like, does fuck all because he can. <laughs> I'm like, was he ever this way when the Ancient One was still uh, around? <laughs> Or did was Steven a bad influence on him? It's possible. No, I take that back. He was irresponsible leaving Strange with Peter and allowing and knowing they were gonna do that spell and letting it happen anyway. Yeah, but that was still post ancient one. Right. I I'm just saying there's more instances of him acting incompetently. Like I said, <laughs> it's like how long before uh, the rest of Comitage and the other uh, sorcerers finally like. <laughs> put their foot down and say, all right, you've had enough. We're, we're giving the role of Sorcerer Supreme back to Strange. Even then again, They so might just f pick someone else. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> like, even Strange is kind of... <laughs> we know what he's done recently. Yeah. <laughs> Neither uh, Wong nor Strange really seem like good picks for uh, considering... Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme right now. <laughs> and now, considering he read that Forbidden Dark Tome thing, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Plus, he's God knows where right now in another dimension. <laughs> fighting an incursion. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the point is, I was expecting Wong to just fucking, like, peace and not help at all. I get that he is in a monastery, he's cut off from the rest of the world and stuff, but he indulges in Western media, and he watches the news, and, you know, he lives in New York, you think he'd be privy to the fact that, oh yeah, busting out a prisoner for your own whims is a crime. I know he can technically get away with it, because who the fuck's gonna arrest the Sorcerer Supreme? 
How could they arrest Seriously, the sorcerer? Seriously, I'd person? like to see them try, because, <laughs> oh boy. But even then, it's like, dude, come on. I don't think you got shield on your side right now, so, nope. uh... <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad that she was able to win her first case. That's definitely something. I mean, it sucks that they still focus more on her than her actual work, but I mean, she's brand new to the scene. She has yet to fully prove herself, like, in the public eye as, like, a lawyer and everything. Like, I get she's obviously qualified. I mean, you have to be to pass the bar and everything. And she's worked as a lawyer for years. So she definitely has that background, but it's a matter of, you know, shutting up the haters and everything. This reminds me, there's one thing I wanted to point out. This has always bothered me, especially when I talk to a person I know about it who has very strong feelings on it. The fact that one of the reasons the many guy haters out there hate She-Hulk so much is because she's a female rendition of a male hero. In fact, I know a lot of guys like that who will totally dismiss any female superhero if they are any sort of derision from a male hero. Because to them, they're not actual heroes. They're not their own person. They're just there to drive up, like, sales for comics for the female demographic. They are not their own characters in their own right. And here's the thing. Technically speaking, they're correct. Because the entire reason there are female derivatives of male superheroes is for said reason. To sell comics. And most of the time, yes, they don't really have their own character outside of being the female sidekick. But this is the 21st century. We've seen these stock female sidekicks or derivative uh, heroes become their own characters in their own rights. We've seen them actually become other heroes. Like, heck, Batgirl technically was derivative of Batman, but she came into her own and heck, she became Oracle. I know she still was technically Batman's sidekick, but she became her own character, same way that Robin eventually became Nightwing. You can get out of the shadow of the hero you originally spawned from. And it sucks that people don't realize that they refuse to acknowledge, won't even give a chance to any female superhero that has anything to do with a male hero. It's like, oh, why can't it be the own character like Wonder Woman stuff? It's like, how many female superheroes do you know of Wonder Woman's caliber? How many can you really name off the top of your head? And even Wonder Woman herself doesn't really get that much respect. Yeah, even in the early yeah. comics, she was always being tied up and put in bondage situations mm -hmm. and stuff. Pretty much, you know, the typical treatment of women in comics, I hate to say. It wasn't until, like, later iterations and stuff that these women were lifted up and given more to do, given actual character, given actual arcs and everything. If you actually, like, find the right material that are written by actual decent writers, like, you can see there are way more to these female characters than just the name they spawn from. I wish people would realize that and acknowledge it. Because saying that there should be no female superhero derivatives, it's like, first off, most of that was the decision of men, I should mention. And second, that's saying that no women should ever be superheroes. Not to mention, you can also argue in terms of it's not just sexist things. You have sidekicks that are males that are basically spin-offs of, of the male superheroes that aren't really any different at all. Or, like you said, with Robin becoming Nightwing, they cast off the shadow and come into their own, become their own unique heroes. It just happens that they've got, you know, the same powers or the same sort of name, mm -hmm. image as the hero that they spawned from. But, like I said, it shouldn't make a difference if they're just some carbon copy. It's what they do with it that matters. How they turn it into their own, manipulated to become their own character, their own hero. Who cares if Hulk is in the Avengers, if she hulks around and saving you, that's who's there. You're that's not somebody care who's, what organization yeah, they're a part of. That, that's <laughs> somebody who is still taking the action, who's still out there doing the job. So at the end of the day, who cares if they're just a female variant of the original hero? You know, who cares if they're a sidekick? If they're there to help, they're there to help. Mm -hmm. Even when She-Hulk first premiered, can you really say that she and Bruce Banner are the same person in and out of their superhero persona? 
They're not. They have different personalities, different backstories, different situations, even different powers and the different levels of control, mm -hmm. even the different ways they control their anger. They are completely different people aside from the similar color aesthetic and the name. Mm -hmm. That's it. She did not want this. She did not want to be a superhero, and she kind of reluctantly fell into it. And then, yeah, that kind of was the way with Hulk, too, but, you know, once he was in, he was in. Yeah. <laughs> like, she see her, she's fighting tooth and nail just to maintain that her professional life is above her superhero life. And anybody who's worked years to become a lawyer will tell you that is a very important thing. You do not throw that away on a whim. But, yeah, speaking of sexist pigs... <laughs> Onto the B plot. Surprised they brought back, uh, what was his name, Dennis or whatever, the fucking uh, misogynist from her old firm. I am not surprised he would fall for a scheme like that. For a character like him, who is delusional enough to think that he's hot, hot enough to actually attract and date a celebrity, I totally buy mm -hmm. that. Yep, the, the Asgardian like god, what's her name? Uh, was it, uh, Yuna? Yeah. Luna or something? Point is, he was an easy target. That's another thing I'm actually kind of confused about. That character, the elf character. So she's from Asgard, they said. When did they have elf, shape-shifting elf characters from Asgard? I don't even want... <laughs> it's, pro it's probably a comic thing more than, you know, an MCU thing. It just never got acknowledged in the MCU until now. I guess, but if they're going to go with the whole shape-shifting thing, why not just go with the scroll? I mean, we're already introducing scrolls and everything, but now suddenly we have elf characters in uh, Asgard who we never saw before. So I don't get why they couldn't, couldn't get, go with any pre-existing characters. I mean, unless there was a shape-shifting elf character from other movies that I overlooked. Do you remember any? No, but I... I... It I know it's really... just there for the comedy of it. I get that. I, I have no issue with it. It's a thing that happens. And it's not just specific to this. The, 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 this is a thing that's happened like DC Comics and others. It's like, there'll be somebody that's been introduced in the comics. They kind of just shoehorn in later <laughs> and act like they're kind of this established character. Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> Comics. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we were just watching a thing about Goron. <laughs> yeah, Goron. Yeah. The legendary supervillain of mm. Spider-Man. Who only shows up in one episode of the old series. And that's And it. yet, when they come in, they're like, apparently some established character. <laughs> it's like, Doctor Doom, Goron, I should have known it was you. <laughs> said she was a rather stupid character too like if she had actually fooled someone competent she could have gotten way more hard time for what she did i know like it's easy for her given she's shape-shifting and everything but she cannot act to save her life not act plus the fact is is like she'll beat the dead horse this is so old we already know where this is going we know that's not really that person it's you so j just stop I get she doesn't really fully grasp how the, uh, you know, United States judicial system works, but, yeah, impersonating a judge, that's a serious crime. Mm -hmm. Frankly, she should have gotten way more yeah. time for that. No, you, you, <laughs> if, if you're gonna do that kind of stuff, you gotta be more subtle about it. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I'm surprised Megan the Stallion didn't sue her for impersonation. That's probably why she came to the court in the first place. But, uh, but like she saw that she's like, yeah, this isn't worth my effort. <laughs> mm, it's like Megan the Stallion just wanted her 15 seconds in MCU. Yeah, so to, to twerk with mm. She-Hulk. I mean, not that I'd have any problem with Megan the Stallion. I don't really know much about her, so I'm not gonna, you know, say anything too negative about it. That just seemed like she obviously wanted to take part. Every celebrity yeah. does their one poll with the series mm -hmm. that they like. It's nothing. New. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not gonna <laughs> give anybody shit over that. And given how many cameos we're used to showing up in the mm. MCU, it's. No surprise, they would get her mm -hmm. for the sake of a one-off joke. I mean, they yeah. can afford it. <laughs> if, if she's having fun with it, I'm in. <laughs> I do love how so many people are mad about that whole twerking scene. Like, oh god, she holds twerking. Uh. And I'm like... Alright, I, I definitely was cringing, but I'm not. No, gonna, I definitely was I'm not gonna throw moment, hate. But... Whatever, you know, if, if you're... I just look at it as her cringing in the face yeah. of all the haters. Like, mm -hmm. her just twerking me like, Oh, you hate this? Yeah. You hate this? Well, stare at this ass, because yeah. you're going to be kissing it for the next six episodes. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> 
And now that leads to the possible plot point of next episode, because for whatever reason, we saw a bunch of guys try to jump her. I'm like, y you've heard of She-Hulk in the media, right? You know how big she is. You know she's strong. She has the powers of a Hulk. What the fuck makes you think you can four can take her down? But that wasn't really what they were doing. They were disguising it as a way to steal blood from her. It was made to look that way, but... But they it, fucked it, up. Instead of doing yeah. that right away, as soon as they grabbed her, they waited till she hulked out, and then the thing couldn't penetrate her skin. So, yeah. Yeah, you guys are definitely incompetent. <laughs> and your boss is going to be pissed at you. Again, I'm going to assume it's Titania, because... Unless they're going to pull another surprise villain out of their ass, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, we've had how many surprise villains up to this point? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wouldn't put it past them to mm -hmm. do that again. And honestly, we, we need to actually have Titania show up, because it's a crime to waste Jamila Jamil. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially mm -hmm. if she's supposed to show up in later mm -hmm. Marvel properties. Like, they got to establish her. They definitely need to. Because I'm going to assume if she was able to escape, like, or at least bust her way through the courthouse that easily, no prison's going to contain her. I mean, she's supposed to be really strong. And I know they have a lot of contingency measures, you know, look what they did with Abomination, but still, you can't hold, like, strong pe people with that amount of strength in forever. But with that being said, tune in next time for the next court case and see who this uh, mysterious bad guy is. Probably not mysterious, but whatever. And see how Jennifer handles herself from here on forward. Until then, I'm Kat McBerry. I'm Doug McBerry. Wong, out. <laughs> wow.